You can now get Adobe Photoshop for free. Here's how. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning, and that is it. Clean, good, so, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a photo, kinda, day. Photo, video, and audio, it's an Adobe day. So we're going to be talking about Adobe and how I personally think Adobe has become yet another digital drug pusher. There's a lot of them out there and Adobe is following down that path. They've introduced a freemium model for their Adobe Photoshop where you can actually use it for free online. It's an online based application. But before we get into it, I want to preface this video with two things. Number one, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They are free. Go grab them. Also, I have to say, I am not a fan of Adobe. I haven't been for many years. And as of about two years ago, I deleted all Adobe programs off of our studio computers, PC and Mac, all of them gone and I installed alternatives to all of those applications. At that time, I created a series. It was called Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. I created a playlist around all of those videos to make it easy for you to follow me on that journey, deleting all of the Adobe software and installing alternatives for them. Doesn't matter if it was Premiere or Photoshop or Illustrator or Lightroom or just all of the Creative Cloud applications were deleted and alternatives installed. There has been a massive amount of people that have went down this path with me over the years. So once again, check those videos out and read all of the comments. There's literally thousands in there. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me say that Adobe has started this free to use version of Photoshop, this alternative to the application that you were to download and pay monthly for. Now, currently this freemium model or this freemium software is only available to people in Canada, but they are looking to expand it globally. They're testing it currently in Canada. All that you need is an Adobe account. So if you log into adobe.com and create an account, you'll be able to use that freemium version of Photoshop. Now, while Adobe says that this freemium version of Photoshop will be fully available for free for everyone to use with no limitations, I would have to say that the gatekeepers will be watching what features are being used, number one, and then start walling off those features and finally forcing payment to unlock them. That is what usually happens when we see a freemium model. Now, Adobe did state that the majority of the core features will remain free. So which ones of those will end up being locked? We really don't know. But like I said, I think a lot of it has to do with which features are most used by the people that use the free software. And it'll be easy for them to see because since it is a web-based piece of software, they are able to monitor everything that you do, every single click that you make. So they know exactly what you're using and for how many minutes you're using it and so on and so forth. So it's very easy for them to monetize later based on these statistics. Now, according to Maria Yap is her name. She is the VP of digital imaging over there at Adobe. She says, and I quote, we want to make Photoshop more accessible and easier for more people to try it out and experience the product. So I call BS on that comment 100% because just think about it, guys. How many people do you know have never heard of Photoshop? I don't care if you're seven years old or if you're 70, you've heard of Photoshop. Matter of fact, the term Photoshop or Photoshopping is used ubiquitously with photo editing or photo manipulation. So how many people have not heard of, oh, he Photoshopped that image? It doesn't matter what software you use to do the manipulation, you're still making a statement, he Photoshopped it. It's the same thing with Coca-Cola and Pepsi, right? You say, just give me a Coke, right? You don't say, give me a Pepsi, just give me a Coke, right? doesn't matter if it's Pepsi or Coke. We look at it as the exact same thing. Now, originally, Adobe introduced this web-based version in October of last year, 
and they called it a collaboration tool. It really wasn't a full featured package. It was more collaborative. So I would be able to upload a image. You can upload an image. We can share them between us and then also do like notations or annotations on top of them. Once again, collaborative. Well, as of late, they have moved from a collaborative piece of software now to a proper, let's call it a proper Adobe Photoshop, web-based Adobe Photoshop, including like layers and refined edge and dodge and burn and the ability to convert smart objects and all kinds of other stuff. All the things that you know and love about a photo editing piece of software. They have now put it into that web-based product. Once again, only available in Canada as of right now, but soon everyone. I personally think that Adobe is using this web-based version of Photoshop as a kind of loss leader or a potential hook for new users. So they can get them on board and then later have them purchase the full version and make those monthly payments. I think that's what the goal is here. And I think that it is smart because Every company needs to have some type of loss leader to bring people into the brand. And I think by doing it with this web-based version will be a very easy way to do it. And I'll get into a little bit more detail in just a second. Now, another quote that was made by the VP over there at Adobe is, quote, I want to see Photoshop meet users where they're at now. She said this was important because, quote, you don't need a high-end machine to come into Photoshop. It's kind of being able to bring people in at a lower level without having to have a really powerful computer. This is really smart. Just like any other digital drug dealer, which Adobe is or has become, you would want people to become addicted as soon as possible. What easier way to get people addicted is to bring people in with low-end machines, especially low-end machines that we see in schools. What are those machines? Google Chromebooks. Well, if you have a piece of software that's web-based, now all of a sudden you can get Photoshop on Google Chrome and now all the kids could use it. That's the exact same thing that happened in the 80s and 90s with Apple. They targeted the kids, they targeted the schools, and it simply worked. When they graduated school and they got their own businesses, when they went out into the workforce, what did they find or what did they buy? They bought Macs get those resources or applications or computers into the schools. Win the minds of the youth. That is the way to do it. So if you didn't know it, Adobe has gotten disgustingly rich from switching from their paid program into this rental or lease product that they introduced a couple of years back. Customers never, ever truly own anything anymore. Once they stop paying that monthly subscription fee, their software also stops working. So this is one of the reasons why I call Adobe that next generation digital drug dealer. Just like all of those mobile game apps that we see advertised on YouTube and everywhere, even on regular TV, they simply get it. They get people hooked in on these freemium model games where they don't have to pay. And then slowly they start dinging the people. Once they get them hooked on those digital drugs, they ding them for 99 cents, a dollar fifty, two ninety nine, whatever. And now all of a sudden at the end of the year, you're like, why did I pay a hundred plus dollars on this little game? You don't realize it with all of these continuous micro payments. Well, the same thing holds true with Adobe and their software and their lease or rental model. You pay in perpetuity that monthly charge every single month. And if you go back the last couple of years, check to see how much you've paid. And then in five years from that, check to see how much you paid and continue doing that once again in perpetuity. And this is what they want to see. And this is just another means of doing it, but doing it online instead of forcing people to download an application that takes a lot of resources that needs a powerful computer. Now they're able to get into the hearts and minds of the youth by putting this application onto Chromebooks and other low end computers so that they can get them hooked. Once again, give them that first fix. And once they're hooked, they can get them to start paying 99 cents or $2.99 a month on certain unlocked features that they need. They don't need the entire application, but just a few 
features that they figure out which are the most important and those are the ones that get unlocked and they know they're going to get $299 even from people that won't spend the $999 or $1999 or $5999 or whatever that CC or Adobe Creative Cloud model costs for them specific to the applications that they want to unlock. So my question to you is once available in your area, if you're not located in Canada, are you going to take that first hit? Are you going to get on board with this Adobe Photoshop freemium model? For me, it is unlikely. And the reason being is, like I said before, after deleting all of the Adobe software off every single studio PC as well as Mac, I installed all of those alternatives and I've never looked back. To be completely honest with you, I have not touched an Adobe piece of software ever since everything was deleted, day one. And that was the end of it. I was forced into figuring out which alternatives would work for the studio in our professional work that we do. And speaking about professional, as a professional, everything that I do, photo, video, and audio has been done over the last couple of years with these alternatives. The stigma in the industry, as most of you know, is that if you do not use Adobe software, somehow there is no way that you could be a professional. Professionals only use Adobe software, and that is 100% completely bullshit, as I have proven in the last two years. As a professional, working as a lead, as a DP, as an editor, doing these videos, working for companies, doing ad spots, all sorts of photo and video projects, I have never used an Adobe piece of software since. So once again, I wanna know your thoughts. Is this something that you're gonna test out? Do you like the idea? Are you an, an Adobe rental victim? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Do you use Adobe and pay their subscription every single month? Also, do you use any type of alternatives or are you someone that uses only alternatives? And finally, would you be interested in cutting the cord like I did and just get rid of Adobe completely and no longer have to pay in perpetuity for software? I wanna know your thoughts. So guys, if you've gotten anything out of this video, please throw it a thumbs up. That would be really appreciated. Also, if you just wanna say thank you, there's a little thank you button right down there. You can click on that or become a member to the channel. That would be awesome also. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.